Back in the late 90s and early 2000s, there were a number of companies that were producing chipsets for 3D graphics for your PC. NVIDIA, of course, was still there, providing the NVIDIA TNT lineup of cards, which eventually transformed into uh, GeForce. We also had ATI, which has subsequently been purchased by AMD for their Radeon graphics, as well as other companies like 3DFX, which have been gobbled up by NVIDIA, and many others besides. But the bottom line is, back then, you had a lot of choice. So, sure, you may not have opted to buy a power vr based GPU, but at the end of the day, they were on the shelf, and it did help to push innovation and technology forward. But over the past several years, this has just not been the case for PC. You've had NVIDIA, and you've had AMD. Well, Intel are obviously looking to change that. We've heard quite a lot from the company over the past year or so as they move towards launching their XE line of graphics cards in the year 2020. Thankfully, these are not cards just aimed at us as consumers, but also for the data center. I say thankfully because, once again, I am all for pushing that pace of technology forward. And, of course, if you're just a gamer hoping for the best frame rates possible, then it may actually promote more competition in the marketplace, which means that we get products at cheaper prices. Something that we can certainly frown over with NVIDIA's RTX 20 series. Yes, you can argue that ray tracing is the future and all, but come on now, the cards are not exactly the price that we had hoped for. Well, Intel, in the meanwhile anyway, is preparing themselves for this and are doing numerous things, including drastic revisions to their drivers. And one of those uh, changes is with the launch of a beta ap application known as the Intel Graphics Command Sensor. It basically changes the look and feel and adds some additional functionality to the Intel graphics driver control panel and will of course eventually be tuned and tweaked and refined for when they do launch a discrete range of GPUs. So my name's Paul and in this redgamingtech.com video we're going to be taking a look at Intel's graphics command center and giving my thoughts and opinions. Now this application is in beta and you can certainly download it yourself. Intel at this point would actually encourage you to do so because it is asking for feedback. So if you have an Intel uh, CPU that has an iGPU, by all means download this application and give Intel your feedback because, well, it's only going to benefit you in the long run if there's even a small chance that you're going to purchase one of the discrete GPUs. I'd also like to thank Deep Call for sending over a Gamer Storm Captain 240 Pro for making this video possible, and also MSI who are providing a MPG Z390 Gaming Pro Carbon AC motherboard. For these tests, I'm using an i7-8700K, although the graphics core inside the 8700K is basically identical to the 9900K, and I will also be leaving the chip at stock, simply because there's not really that much of a point in overclocking it when I'm only doing, for this video anyway, iGPU testing and taking a look at the command center. When you first load up the command center, you'll immediately notice the difference visually compared to the older designs. It's actually possible to choose from different themes, and we'll get to that, but overall while the design is still undergoing work, the UI is still a major leap forward. The greeting screen when you load up Command Center is the home screen, where you can either choose to manually add games if the Command Center doesn't recognize them, or you can have the Graphics Command Center scan for titles automatically. If the Intel driver team has created a profile for the title in question, it will be available for a one-click optimization, which as the name implies will have the software tweak the settings appropriate for your hardware. You can easily tell the games that have profiles created by Intel because there's a lightning bolt symbol thing to the right of it. Naturally, you can tweak these settings if you desire, and clicking on a game gives you access to a menu where you can adjust things such as vertical sync, anti-aliasing, and anisotropic filtering. While I suspect the vast majority of people watching this video do understand what these settings do, the preview and explanation Intel provides and the performance hit of what you'll uh, occur is really nice for new users. 
and the preview system is similar to say Nvidia's GeForce Experience, albeit with fewer options, but arguably Intel's solution is just easier to find out what's being adjusted in game. Next up we have the display tab, and the general settings aren't anything special, adjust resolution, refresh rates, tweak scaling, and so on, but the color tab is really quite feature packed, ample controls to tweak color balance and saturation, and this is strengthened further by the video tab, which offers awesome controls and tweaking for video content. There's a few videos that automatically play back and it makes it just things easy to adjust the balance of the image to suit your display. What's even better with these two features is that you can add your own custom video or photo as a preview. So if you're really trying to dial in the settings and calibrate your display, this will help a lot. The system tab contains an overview for the specs of your system, driver information and so on, and you can also adjust keyboard shortcuts for specific commands if you so desire. The support option, well, that just speaks for itself, and preferences allow you to change themes, and there's even one called IceLink. I see what you did there, Intel. There's definitely functionality that isn't yet present, and the absence of a relive slash shadowplay alternative is definitely felt, but realistically, and I'm saying this with no insider information, but purely logic, this is a feature that will surely debut with the XE series of cards, and doesn't really suit an iGPU just yet. Indeed, while being able to record your gameplay with an application to rival, say, GeForce Experience is almost certain to be added later, this is particularly true given Intel's push towards eSports, other options are just clearly missing but they would likely only be beneficial with the power of a discrete GPU. Realistically, an iGPU just isn't going to offer the performance necessary for, say, downsampling. This may change some with the launch of Intel's Ice Lake Generation 11 graphics, but still only for less demanding games on lower resolution screens. So downsampling, more anti-aliasing modes, and other settings we see in rival control panels are surefire bets to be added later on down the road. Personally, I'd also like to see performance metrics and overlays available too. I love MSI's Afterburner, but I would appreciate a nice readout on performance data similar to what AMD have done with their own drivers. It just makes things simpler and easy. Also, there's a lot of opportunities for Intel to add features, and while a rival to say Ansel could be nice and on the cards, imagine if Intel pushed towards a suite FX or reshade type of feature in their drivers, and although this was backed by Intel, it was largely open source and the community could help optimize and add profiles for games. So it would be awesome for titles that were recently released, but also great for pushing new life into older titles. I also really like the fact that Intel are trying to make this application as easy to understand as possible with features like being given a preview of what, say, anti-aliasing does, as well as a pretty decent explanation to the technology. Sure, you, as someone who has a fundamental understanding of graphics, may feel that that's unnecessary, but you have to remember that everyone starts somewhere, so this just helps educate users, and I think it's really helpful that Intel are doing that. It still needs a little work here and there, but generally speaking, I think Intel are on the right track does also help their case that NVIDIA are still really needing to update the NVIDIA control panel. Uh, yes, GeForce Experience looks pretty snazzy, but the NVIDIA control panel itself, not so much. And I have to say, and I have to give credit to AMD, the changes they've made to their own control panel looks really nice, so hopefully NVIDIA will follow suit, uh, particularly with the pressure of uh, Intel obviously releasing the beta. I'd also like to give Intel credit for how they are actually handling things in terms of taking feedback from the community and asking the community what features do they want, what type of uh, workloads do they uh, normally put the GPU through and so on and so on. And I do believe that there is definitely a passion there from Intel. I think that the company have made a rather large change in the few, last few years, mostly thanks to changes in management, to how it's handling things. And it's a real shame, to be honest with you, that these uh, changes were not earlier on in the company's history, because I think we probably have a very different story, both in terms of graphics and CPU, than what we do now. But still, I'm pleased to see that 
uh, particularly in the graphics departments, things are very different. And uh, I did get to meet all of these folks at the Odyssey event, which took place at GDC 2019, and it was a real pleasure to speak to them. I'm really looking forward to seeing some uh, competition, a third player entering the discrete GPU market. That isn't to say that I have a preference of Intel over NVIDIA or AMD. I always have the preference of the best product for my cash, but I do love the idea of additional competition in the marketplace, and it's one of the reasons that I've been so happy that AMD have been hitting so hard with Matisse, aka Zen 2. NVIDIA or any one company dominating the graphics space is just not good for us. So it's going to be really fascinating in 2020 when NVIDIA shift to 7nm, when we see the high-performance RDNA GPUs from AMD and also seeing what Intel are going to be bringing to the table as well. Anyway, with all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you did, then you know what to do. Click the subscribe button as well as share the video on the social medias because that really helps out YouTube. And, well, you can drop a like on the video and also comment down below what you're hoping for for uh, Intel to achieve with their graphics cards in 2020. But take care of yourselves. Bye for now.